I've been using this Onyx Books Note Air for the past two weeks. All my ebooks, newspapers, magazines, I read them all here just to really experience this device. So, this video is a review of my experience with the Books Note Air, and I'm going to talk a lot about the stylus pen and what's it like writing with it. And to give better context, I'm going to compare writing with this pen to writing on the iPad with the Apple Pencil. I realize many people are choosing e readers nowadays, so I'll share a little bit into my own research, what I consider it important and if you're soon to be a new user of the books note air i also have six additional tips on how to make it even better for you so if you want to know keep watching why this note air so it started off with i knew i really cared about four things screen size must have a pen more than one ebook store and must be good value for money i'm the finance guy of course i don't buy expensive things so i started off comparing five onyx models poke three Nova 3, Note 3, Note Air, and a Max Lumi. Now, all these models have different screen sizes, battery capacity, but they all could run Android and use the Google Play Store. I created a table to have all the different specifications of these Onyx models, from the pixel size, the weight, the thickness, but the biggest factors for me at first was the screen size. So the Onyx Poke 3 is more or less a one-handed device. The screen is six inches, so I wanted something bigger. Poke 3 was out for me. On the other hand, the Max Lumi, the screen size was 13.3 inches, which was a bit too big for me. The Max Lumi, is out. Now I was left deciding between the Nova 3, Note 3, and the Note Air. They all are quite similar. They run Android 10. They all had speakers. They could use Bluetooth to connect to your earphones to play the audiobooks that you have. So all these models have at least 32 gigabytes of internal space, which is really enough internal memory, just in case you're wondering, because you're really not going to use this to actually watch videos. The Nova 3 actually has the best resolution at 300 ppi, but I thought it was entirely possible that I might regret afterwards simply simply because the screen size was only 7.8 inches. Size always matters for men. Screen size. So now I was deciding between Note 3 and Note Air. They were both 10.3 inches, same screen size and same pixel resolution. If you wanted the fingerprint sensor to unlock the e-reader, you wanted a bigger battery capacity, then go with the Note 3. But the Note Air, which doesn't have fingerprinting, I didn't think was really that important because the way that you just use e-readers is very different from a smartphone. With a phone, you could be logging in and out of your phone 40 to 50 times a day, especially while you're on the move. But when you're with an e-reader, normally you'll be in a chair on the couch, in the bed, ready to read. To me, the e-reader is not meant to be a device that you have so much interaction with. Paying for that extra money just for the convenience of using that fingerprint sensor, I don't think it adds that much value. So I went with the Note Air, which is the thinnest e-reader of them all at just 5.8 millimeters thick. Super easy to carry around and I absolutely think it is the best bang for money. To make life easier for you, if you want to buy the exact Note Air model that I have after watching this video review, that product link is in my descriptions below. And why did I choose the Onyx over the Amazon Kindle? Well, it's because I already knew that there were some books and magazines in other languages other than English that were not going to be in the Kindle bookstore. So that's why it really started off with Onyx because it at least would give me the freedom to use almost any other ebook store that I actually want, even the Kindle as well. Now let's talk about the book stylus pen and compare it to the Apple Pencil. When you pick up the book's pen, it's actually a bit too light for my liking. I tend to like the weightier feeling of actually the Apple Pencil. But you do get used to holding the book's pen in your hand. I mean, it's not that big of an issue. If it was maybe 10 to 20% heavier in weight, that'd probably be perfect for me. But what I do like about the book's pen is that these grooves on the pen, it fits much more firmly in your hand comparing say this to the Apple Pencil, which I just think it feels a bit too smooth, shiny, and just a bit too plastic. Writing on the book's pen was actually surprisingly responsive, even though there is a noticeable millisecond lag, but it absolutely won't affect any note taking at all. But what I found was rather annoying was when you were writing very near to the top or the bottom screen edges of the book's note air, the accuracy between where you write, where you place your pen, to where it appears in the book's note air, then starts to get a little off. But luckily, there's not many chances where you write so close to the top edge or where you write so close to the bottom edge. Most of the writing happens in the middle section. Another thing about the book's pen that it's pretty useful that the pen has one magnetic side, which is indicated by these two dots on the flat side of the pen. And because the book's note air actually has a metallic finish, the pen sticks quite nicely to the note air. But just be mindful though that only sticks on the edge of this side of the device. 
If you take the pen to the other side, which is this side, which really has the branding, this side is where the port, there's a USB-C port. So the pen is not gonna stick on this side. It only works on one side. But what I think really beats the Apple Pencil is two things. First, this pen, this Books Pen, there is no need for any Bluetooth connection. The Books Pen doesn't need to be connected to Bluetooth to actually work with the Note Air. And what was actually really annoying with the Apple Pencil is that you had to charge your pencil on the iPad like this. Definitely great that there's no need to charge this Books Pen, it just works out of the box like any pen should be. So yes, I think this pen wins much more over than a more expensive Apple Pencil. You don't need to charge it, you don't need Bluetooth. And what more can you ask for? Because this pen comes with it when you buy the Books Note Air. But what I would probably have liked is if this pen actually had an eraser at the end where it would have been great if you were doing sketching or if you were actually writing a lot of notes and you need to erase something quickly. Although you can buy other stylus pens that work with the Books Note, but I think I can still live with this by selecting the eraser on the screen. If you guys found this Onyx model comparison really helpful, I really appreciate if you hit that like button because then it'll help more people find out about this real video and hopefully help them to decide which Onyx e-reader is much better for them. Now onto the six tips of using the Books Note Air. Because this model has actually a bigger screen, the split screen function actually works really well. It loads fast and even after splitting the screen, both sides of the split screen are big enough to actually to use. Now the tip here is that you can actually switch the note taking sides both left and right so just hit the button here to switch sides so it's very friendly to both right-handed or left-handed people a very nice touch for note taking uploading your downloaded ebooks and audiobooks is actually also super easy on the note air you just need to do this and this is my preferred way that's by using their website push.books.com and you just need to set this up once so when you take the e-reader back home link it to the same wi-fi to your pc or your phone then on this website go to push then drag and drop whatever PDFs, eBooks that you have right here. Now, once it's uploaded to the server, you go back to your e-reader, this device, you go to apps, transfer books, push here, and then download them. Super easy. The Books Note Air is okay to hold in one hand for more than five minutes when you're reading like this, but as soon as you actually have a cover with the Note Air, something like this, this additional weight and you're holding it like this for more than five minutes will start to make your wrist feel strained. So I know I'm stating the obvious, but I actually think it's really important that this is actually a two-handed device. If you just want a one-handed device, then get the Onyx Poke 3 model. Now the response time of the Note Air is definitely much slower than the iPad. So the next tip that I do recommend is adjusting the power of sleep time because it does take time to actually power up this device, maybe 15 seconds if it's actually gone off. So I would go to settings, go to power, choose power off timeout, and here inactive after 12 hours. So what that means is only after 12 hours will the books no air actually go to a deep sleep. By doing this, you actually prevent the device from actually needing to reboot. So this here, auto sleep is slightly different. Just set it here at five minutes. I think it's fine. It's still very quick to wake up. You just need to input the password again if you actually set one up. Here's another thing that I think is great for language learners if they're using the Note Air, especially if you're learning or familiar with Asian languages like Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. So you can actually create writing grids in your notes. So to actually make these box guidelines to write characters to practice writing, which is actually quite neat. All you have to do here is just go to notes, then in templates, add a new layer, and select the grids that you actually want. So there's also no physical buttons on the books other than the wake up button here. That's why you actually need to use this virtual button called the navigation ball. But the problem is it's all icons and no words. So it would take some time to familiarize yourself with what each button actually does. So this is the back button, volume, app optimization, home, shutdown, scrolling button, screenshot, the navigation ball setting, and collapsing the navigation ball. So when I was first using this device, you know, honestly, there was a learning curve. So it's not as user-friendly as an iPad, but it probably took me two to three days at most to learn most of the basics. But I really like using the Note Air right now. It's great for my long commute to work. But I highly recommend you get this model if you're thinking about an e-reader now and you don't actually want to use a smartphone or an iPad for reading. And how is an e-reader review complete without recommending a favorite book of the year? So early on, I did a review on this book, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates in this video here. 
definitely my favorite book this year so check it out if you haven't already but i'd love to hear what was your favorite book this year you know feel free to let me know in the comments below because i still want to fill this e-reader with as many great books as possible thanks for watching happy reading